Seven, six, five, four, three, two.
expertise, resources, commitment. At Sullivan Financial, we offer a team approach to financial planning, offering you a broader scope of expertise than you will likely find in any one person. Clients are our main priority, which is why we work to understand your unique circumstances and ultimately create a distinctive plan that provides a roadmap for your financial journey. Located in Mitchell, Indiana, they can be reached at 812-849-2670. That's 812-849-2670. In 2012, the Washington County Community Foundation began working on its next big initiative, Education Matters. The goal of Education Matters is to increase the educational attainment of adults residing in our county. The initial focus has centered on adults with some college and no degree. With the assistance of scholarships and a peer mentoring program, the foundation began helping adults return to college to complete their degree or obtain a certification in 2013. Realizing that strength lies in numbers, Washington County partnered with Clark, Floyd, Harrison, and Scott counties to create Education Matters Southern Indiana. This initiative continues to build. United Producers, Inc. We are the largest livestock marketing company in the world. We currently have 17 auction markets and 23 direct buying stations across Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio, Michigan, Tennessee, and Illinois. Our goal is to market your livestock to maximize your dollar while implementing animal safety procedures. To find your local market, visit our website at uproducers.com or contact Ryan Bat at 812 Six two zero zero seven six nine. Again, that is eight one two six two zero zero seven six nine. Farmer owned, farmer values. Is your ride not as reliable as it used to be? Eddie Gilstraps is the place to go. With 80 years in the auto industry, we know how to get things done. At Eddie Gilstrap Motors, we have an unbeaten level of commitment to buyers, unmatched customer service, a wide array of new and used inventory, and various financing options are just a few of the ways in which we serve our customers. Give us a call at 877-227-9421. That's 877-227-9421. 227-9421 or just visit our website. Links Clothing and Shoes is proud to support West Washington Senator football and wish them a great season. Stop by and see us for all your school fan gear. We offer a wide variety of tees, hoodies, hats, and more. We also offer custom screen printing and embroidery for your team, business, or event. We are conveniently located on the north side of the Salem Square and have been serving our community for over 15 years. Our hours are Monday through Friday, 9 to 5.30, and on Saturdays, they're 9 to 3. Stop in or call us at 812-883-4154. That's 812-883-4154. Shop local and save. As your American Family Insurance agent, Michael Long can offer you dependable auto, home, business, and life insurance, as well as other insurance products. He's big enough to serve and small enough to care. His team and their unique backgrounds, trainings, and experiences have prepared them well to help meet your insurance needs. Additionally, as residents of your community, they understand how important it is to be there for you. Together, they are building strong partnerships that help everyone succeed. When it comes to your car insurance, you deserve more than a card tucked in your glove box. That's why American Family Car Insurance goes beyond a piece of paper or an app to give you smart, customized coverage and real peace of mind. No matter how your life changes, you can feel comfortable you will have the right auto insurance protection and support every step of the way. Not sure how much or what type of coverage is right for you? Michael Long is the person to talk to. 
If you talk at me, we'll hear you. We all want our kids to grow up safe and healthy. So we show them how. And we tell them with honest conversations that let them know what we expect. Not just one time, but every chance we get. That's especially important when it comes to alcohol and other drugs. Kids not only need to know the dangers and how to avoid them, they need to hear it often from you. And when it comes to pain medications, opioids, they need to know that they should never be taken without a prescription and never shared with friends or family. It's dangerous and illegal. So talk with your kids and guide them through the challenges of growing up safe and healthy. Because when you talk, they hear you. For more information about talking with your kids about underage use of alcohol and other drugs, visit underagedrinking.samhsa.gov. So talk, they hear you. You can do it if you try. Are you looking for a great HVAC person that's also local? Somebody who's from here in Southern Indiana? Then look no further than Mike Music and Music Mechanical Services, located in Paoli, Indiana. They offer a wide variety of services, including not only maintenance, but repairs on all of your heating and cooling needs. Got an ice maker on the fritz? They can help you with that. How about a commercial chiller or freezer? They've got your back. Is your boiler on the fritz? They can help you with that too. They even work on outdoor furnaces. Best of all, they're located right here in Paley, Indiana. Give Mike a call at 812-498-1736. Don't worry, Mike Music knows every aspect of the HVAC maintenance inside and out. Mike is a problem solver and can get all your equipment up and running like new, whether it's summer or winter. Then Mike is your guy. Music Mechanical Services, HVAC done right, Paley, Indiana. 812-498-1736. In 2012, the Washington County Community Foundation began working on its next big initiative, Education Matters. The goal of Education Matters is to increase the educational attainment of adults residing in our county. The initial focus has centered on adults with some college and no degree. With the assistance of scholarships and a peer mentoring program, the foundation began helping adults return to college to complete their degree or obtain a certification in 2013. Realizing that strength lies in numbers, Washington County partnered with Clark, Floyd, Harrison, and Scott counties to create Education Matters Southern Indiana. This initiative continues to build. United Producers, Inc. We are the largest livestock marketing company in the world. We currently have 17 auction markets and 23 direct buying stations across Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio, Michigan, Tennessee, and Illinois. Our goal is to market your livestock to maximize your dollar while implementing animal safety procedures. To find your local market, visit our website at uproducers.com or contact Ryan Bat at 812-620-0769. Farmer owned, farmer values. At Eddie Gilstrap, our customers are family. Rated in the top 6% nationwide in Ford dealers, we pride ourselves on our no-pressure environment, honesty, and integrity. Come see us today and discover why we're different. Eddie Gilstrap Motors. Lynx Clothing and Shoes carries a wide variety of items from name brand clothing and shoes to sports apparel and sporting goods. We offer custom screen printing and embroidery, free gift wrapping, alternations, and layer weight. Our hours are Monday through Thursday, 9 to 5.30, Friday, 9 to 6, and Saturday, 9 to 5. We are conveniently located on the north side of the Salem Square. We are a family-owned and operated business. Stop by and see us today. 812-883-4154. Michael Long with American Family Insurance offers auto, home, business, farm, and life insurance, which includes motorcycles, boats, ATVs, UTVs, classic and antique autos, renters, manufactured homes, rentals, along with event coverage such as weddings, golf hole-in-ones, conferences, and much, much more. He's licensed in Indiana, Ohio, and Florida. 
For more information, look him up on Facebook to see insurance tips and to sign up for his agency giveaways. Michael Long, American Family Insurance, all your protection under one roof. Welcome to West Washington Livestream. My name is Brad Mills, and I'm sitting here with Mitchell head coach, Zach C. Zach, thanks for joining us here in your uh, first year at, at Mitchell. Um, you know, alumni correct of Mitchell High School? Yes, sir. So I mean, the Blue Jacket uh, program means a lot to you. I know you were talking about, before you got on the air, um, you're going back and forth from your job at Crane. Um how have you kind of uh, embedded yourself uh, with this group? You know, you're not there every day. How have you uh, tried to uh, reach out to these kiddos and uh, that you're coaching, and especially also the younger kids I know you've really reached out to um, to help build your program? Uh, yeah, luckily I've been uh, blessed with some guys that are in the school that are wanting to help and that are on staff. So i got three or four coaches that are uh, currently teachers that are in the school every day, so that helps a lot too. And just being on staff with uh, Kevin Kling and Troy Pritchett the uh, last seven or eight years here, I, I've grown relationships with them, so a lot of them, you know, they know they can reach out and talk to me whenever they need, so that's made it easier for sure. So, Coach, you, you've taken some lumps here at the beginning of the year. I know with a new, you know, new young team here, and uh, you got some, you got some veterans too. Um, uh, what what should uh, we expect to see on the field Friday night from the Blue Jackets? Uh, things we talked about this week is we haven't taken real good care of the ball first two weeks. Um, we have not valued possessions, and we've set up set up our defense in bad situations. You know where they're working with twenty five, thirty yards short field. So that's been a big, big thing here the last couple of weeks. Uh, trying to, we're trying to fix. You know, we got to value possessions, especially as a young team. You know, and you got to be okay with three or four yards. You know, everything's not going to be a home run. So you know, you just got to, got to value the possessions and just be okay with three or four yards and just keep that defense out on the field and you know wear them down. You know, taking care of the ball is something West Washington's really uh, harped on. I know Coach Lauer and I have spoke about that. Um, it does put you in a bad spot there. Um, your your offense, you guys like to throw the ball around, and um, it's some some, but it's also a chance for you guys to um, make some possessions. So, um, who on your team do we need to really look out for this week? Uh, we feel like we have we feel like we have a lot of good skills across the board. Uh, we feel like we have an athletic line. We are we're young, but uh, for the most part across the board. But we think that we have you know. All the way across, we feel like we have good athletes, whether it's, you know, Blake King or Malachi Goodman or Lucas Gosnell, Sven Lutschka, you know, Tate Woods, Gavin Robinson, our quarterback. He's also a young quarterback, sophomore, but phenomenal athlete, uh, really good with his legs, and he throws a good ball. It's just, I think, just getting them comfortable because, you know, that's, that's some of them played last year, but it's just a different speed uh, varsity on Friday nights. It's a different speed than what most kids are, you know, used to playing when they're young. And and that's an adjustment for everybody. I know the the Senators had twelve uh, first year uh, starters on varsity our first game, and you know you see that kind of come around there. Um, have you had a vocal leader on the team that's kind of led your team this year? Yeah, I think that I think that our seniors have done a good job. Um, we have our junior center, uh, Cody Howard, has been – he's really, I think I would call him the glue. He is the guy that's, you know, going to be vocal, get the guys organized, you know. If we're, you know, not having a, a great practice, he's the one that's going to bring them together, you know, and, like, be like, hey, let's go. We need to get get this stuff together and uh, execute. So, Cody Howard has been a good one for us. Waylon German has been a good one. So, those two kids I've been proud of. And then Lucas Gosnell has been – has been doing a better job. Uh, I think he kind of took on a different role change this year because he's not really ever had to been that vocal leader. Now him being a senior, I've asked that of him, and I think he's delivered on that so far. And that's what you always look for at this time. You know, Coach, uh, we just had a big hot spell um, where it got super hot outside. How hot was that turf up at Mitchell? It, yeah, that turf definitely it gets warm when it's, uh, the sun's beating down on it. So it was a hot week, yeah, and I think everybody kind of dealt with that. And, you know, I think in years past we would have complained or, you know, been like, you know, it's hot, this, that. But I, I felt like we we had good we had a good week of practice last week, I felt like. And, 
you know, the the complaining wasn't there. It was more positive, and that's just something you love to see as a coach because, you know, you're trying to change the mentality, trying to change the way that these kids approach things, and I think that they're they're buying in, and I think it's only a matter of time before it really all starts clicking. Well, and that's something you see. I know, Coach, a lot of times when you get somebody that's an alum of a school who takes over a program, you know, you know what it means to wear blue and gold there, and uh, you know that what you expect and what what could also hurt your team and so um you get them out there um how can you talk to us about the rest of your program all the way down through your junior high and your youth i know you're heavily involved in it i've seen some facebook posts and how how are the little jackets doing they're doing phenomenal it's uh it's awesome to see our our youth numbers are from second to sixth grade uh we don't have as many second graders but it's nice to see the second graders get out there. And uh, but from second to sixth grade, we I think we are at 68 or 69 kids. So the numbers are fantastic down there. The attitude's awesome. The youth coaches are awesome. I mean, they I can't say anything negative about them. nothing but positive with the youth coaches and the players down there. They they worked hard. I've been going to their practices when I can, and they just they just love football and they want to be out there. And as a head coach, that's always you know, a very bright spot when you got kids that just love the game, then it makes coaching a lot easier. That's always good, Coach. I know it's been a long season. I thank you for joining me because um, here on the Jamie Sullivan, Raymond James uh, pregame show, um, we've had a lot going on. Uh, Coach, uh, we, each week we uh, get to talk to everybody, and uh, and I appreciate you taking time because I know it is your time's valuable. So um, thank you, and good luck this year. Uh, I appreciate it, yeah, anytime, and like I said, I thank you for reaching out and any chance I get to talk about, you know, my players and our program, I always will because, uh, you know, they deserve it and how hard they work. And anytime I can get a chance to brag on them a little bit, I will. We're going to head back to the booth here on West Washington live stream. Expertise, resources, commitment. At Sullivan Financial, we offer a team approach to financial planning offering you a broader scope of expertise than you will likely find in any one person. Clients are our main priority, which is why we work to understand your unique circumstances and ultimately create a distinctive plan that provides a roadmap for your financial journey. Located in Mitchell, Indiana, they can be reached at 812-849-2670. That's 812-849-2670. Two six seven. Welcome to West Washington live stream here on the Jamie Sullivan Raymond James pregame show. I'm here with Coach Jeremy Lowry. Coach, uh, we get a big win last week uh, to get the first one on the year, thirty nine nothing against Clarksville, and uh, we're uh, preparing for Mitchell. So uh, just kind of bring us up to how the team's been doing since that victory, and what you really want to highlight from that big victory last week. Yeah, so uh, super proud of our kids. And, uh, you know, we said last week coming off a loss that uh, we weren't going to hit the panic switch. And, uh, you know, we were still super excited, just as excited about this bunch as uh, we were when the season started and that we were just going to – we were going to stick to the plan. Uh, We weren't going to panic. And uh, we are going to rely on the things we believe in and um, our everyday – practices and our routines and that's exactly what we did and the kids did a great job preparing again uh, for the second week in a row and uh, I thought we came out um, a little skittish in the first quarter and then uh, after we got the the nerves settled down I thought we played played really good football uh, in in all three phases of the game. Is there something like how does that conversation go when you've had that rough first quarter and you get to it? You get to it. You know what is what is said or how do you how do you regroup the team from that point? Well, you know we're big we're big in honesty. Um, we're gonna let our kids know where they stand, and I think at the end of the day they appreciate that. They always know what they're getting. Uh, we're gonna be we're gonna try to be hard on the issues while being as easy as we can on the people. Uh, and I think our kids trust that. And um, that's, a, that's a big part of who we are is trust. And, you know, bottom line is uh, had a real extended chance to talk to them at halftime. 
obviously we had already turned it around some by then, but, uh, you know, it was just super candid and let them know that, uh, Hey fellas, uh, you're probably never going to play a worse quarter than what you just played in the first quarter. Um, as far as, uh, the issues we were having with ball security and, and things like that. And, uh, the good news is, is we had all those issues and we were still up substantially at halftime and it just gives our kids a, a real good idea of our ceiling. Uh, this team has a very high ceiling. Uh, there is some things we obviously have to keep working on and uh, some timing and continuing to work on taking care of the football. Uh, but we're a very timing based offense and uh, I see improvements happening, you know, this week in practice as well. Uh, they're adjusting well, and, and that's super encouraging because, as you can see, Friday night, uh, we have the potential to really put points on the board. And it is, and those points, a lot of those points were set up by some big plays there. Um, we go back to that rough first quarter. We're just going to imagine that never happened. Right. And then uh, we get to the second quarter, and we kind of had some – issues there again but you know what we our special teams came through uh gavin hunt with a big punt sets up the uh the eventual safety for there and then we get the ball back um something a lot of teams don't practice um let me ask you this do you guys ever practice uh coming off of a off of you know getting the ball in a safety like that and kicking off from a different spot well you know we we do thursdays we work situations um just so happens this early in the season we have not (laughs) gotten to a a transitioning from uh, a safety to a, you know, either a kick or a punt, whatever you choose to do from, from like you said, a different area of the field. Uh, I was a little frustrated. We had two guys kind of run out there a little late. Uh, but other than that, I thought we handled it very well. Uh, but, but, no, building up to that moment, you're right. Uh, special teams really shined in the punt. And then uh, Colin Hasty comes up huge. Oh. Uh, wins his one-on-one matchup, meets the ball carrier in the end zone, and we get the safety, which is uh, you know huge momentum play there. Rolando Brook over and uh, Gap. No. Gavin Clooney, right? Yes, sir. Gavin Clooney there uh, coming up real big. I'm um, taking on a lot. And that's like you're saying, we have that next guy coming up and just beating his man. And then he's off to the races. I mean, it was a, it was an unbelievable sack right there. Big momentum thing there. We saw everybody. Um, you know, I said if on the air, if we were betting on the first score to be a safety, you would have won a lot of money because I don't think anybody would have had that as the first score. But then you, you go on trage- – and it was funny because it was like a teeter-totter because at that moment, all of a sudden, sudden it was like we were at ease offensively and then we attacked through the air um and you know guys were open there was guys who fought for balls um and i know we're going to see that a lot this week from mitchell so how how is this how are the centers preparing for that and you know a big air assault coming from mitchell yeah so you mentioned a couple things there you know one um i thought we were really good in the trenches um the guys you mentioned uh played really well brooke over and uh clooney and colin hasty and it starts up there. You know, we also mentioned special teams. Um, you know, those, those, those are hidden areas that a lot of times uh, people don't see with the naked eye. Uh, but it definitely shows up. And as the game went on, um, turned out to be a huge advantage for us. Um, and then when you start talking about the throw game and we were able to hmm. we, we, we were able to open it up and push the ball down the field and you know, Gavin has the ability to, to push the ball down the field. We have some very capable uh, athletes to go down there and catch it. Morrow had a big night, and Colton Brown scored his first varsity touchdown, and uh, Tyler Miller was able to catch mm-hmm. a touchdown pass. Morrow had a couple, of course. And, uh, you know what, that's a combination of things. Uh, one, we've done a really good job of getting the ball on the perimeter this mm-hmm. year. And uh, anytime you can threaten the defense on the perimeter, forcing them to get their secondary involved, Mm -hmm. uh, I think it really gives you big opportunities in the throw game as things keep developing. And that's something we talked about, how just those defenders having to come up a step or two to respect that outside edge. That Isaiah Dennis comes through with a big run there where he makes a big – I think he cut back three different ways. Um, He started outside, inside. Um, It looked like something out of a video game, and then he just – press the turbo button and he was gone um that's where you get them playing back and it helps to your advantage um definitely take care of the ball there as we saw as you guys got on there um uh 
the offensive line kept pushing. It's a lot easier to push when you're in the offensive line when you're winning like that and uh, getting through there. Um, was there anybody on the offensive line that you saw really stepped up? They don't get a lot of uh, – or is it a whole team attack this week? You know, uh, uh, Alex Halchin has been super great for us up front. You know, he's uh, he's our <clears throat> guy with the most experience up there. And, uh, you know, we mentioned him already defensively, but Colin Hastie's done a fine job up front. And uh, – Joe Hart has stepped in as our new starting center, and uh, he's he's adapted very well and gaining a ton of confidence. And then at the tackles, um, you got a Jack Armstrong, uh, and you got a Brennan Sears who have both played very well. Those guys are more athletic guys. Uh, we get them to second level more, uh, pull them out onto the perimeter more. You know, a lot of teams use their their guards to do that. We're more uh, more of our movers are. Uh, or our offensive tackles and um, our bigger, more base type, knock you off the ball type of guys are our offensive guards. And uh, super pleased with how that that unit is progressing Mm -hmm. because it definitely all starts there. I I will say something I'm really proud. I'm going to knock on wood for us here, Coach, because played a lot of penalty-free football up to this point in the year. Um, I know that's something you guys preach and you coach, and I think that's kind of a – it's kind of a – byproduct of good coaching that you see is how you can beat your man legally and not uh of course keep your head in it but then also do the right techniques um is is that is that what is that okay to assume that or is there something else i'm missing there well you know it's uh like you said knock on wood uh, right now we're averaging one penalty a game uh which is really really mm-hmm. good um we're very technical in what we try to do from an offensive standpoint, and I think that is really showing up on the field. Uh, you know, we are – I think it's no secret, anybody that watches against game field, we are definitely a triple option-based offense. And uh, I think that forces you to be super technical up front, and I think we're getting some of the benefits of that with the lack of penalties. I think the other thing it gets is uh, I think, you know, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say it because – you have a fullback mm-hmm. that could be getting the ball. You have a quarterback mm-hmm. that could mm-hmm. be getting the ball. And you have a pitch man mm-hmm. that could be getting the ball. Mm-hmm. Um, I think officials' eyes are wandering more all <laughs> over the field. Um, a broadcaster's eyes are moving all yeah. over the field. So they don't get as zeroed in on, let's say, perimeter blocking and things like yeah. that. So maybe yeah. you do benefit a little bit from that <laughs> as well. I'm, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm not saying that I'm seeing glaring things <laughs> on film where we are holding and things like that. But definitely um, – the officials have to keep up with a lot more. Well, and I also think one thing, too, is we'll, we'll see our players, and I want to point this out, I know it's our players. When we change a formation, I don't think you've had to call a timeout all year where somebody wasn't in the right formation when you got there offensively, which is huge. We saw that the other night. I saw you negotiating with the referee because the kid was not on line. He was not set, and it was a big gain. They got a first down on I said, well, Coach Lowry's right on that guy because right there he was never set. He was not on the line. The kid – got on really late and he was on our sideline and so um you know that's where we practice I think that's one thing and if I really wish uh you know people saw that those Thursday walkthroughs you talk about because that is it's the biggest mental day of the week when you're out there because you have to get ready you know here's this package we're in like this we're in like this we're in like this um uh with the triple option you know offense you know that's something it's it is a well-oiled machine when it gets going um, do you, uh, you know, we go up this week against, uh, Mitchell in conference play. This is a big, uh, you know, you only get one first conference game. We talk about to win conference. You got to start with the first one. Um, what does the PLAC mean to you guys? I know it's one of your goals. Um, any more you want to add to that? Yeah, of course it's one of our goals and, and, and you want to get out of the gate and, and get a good start there. And, you know, we kind of, you kind of mentioned Mitchell, uh, earlier, uh, they're going to try to spread. They're going to try to spread us out a little bit. They're going to try to throw the football. Uh, they've got some nice athletes we're going to have to keep in check. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's about the Senators, mm-hmm. and uh, that's that's how we operate around here. And uh, We're going to have to continue to improve on taking care of the football, and we're going to have to continue to do a great job in uh, controlling those penalties like we just talked about. And, uh, you know, all those intangibles that we were talking about earlier about lining up correctly and uh, – You know, there's really a lot of things that go into football that take no talent at all. And, uh, but just because it doesn't take talent doesn't mean it doesn't take practice. And uh, we try to take a lot of pride in 
those different situations in the game and how we signal our plays in and our communication in general and people getting lined up correctly and and uh, motion happening when motion is supposed mm-hmm. to happen and all those things that can add up to a lot of problems mm-hmm. if you don't dial into the details. And at the end of the day, those those are what we're always working on. Uh, this time of year, we are very much so working on those mm-hmm. things because it's uh, – it's, it's a huge part early in the season on, on whether you're going to be successful or not. You know, we always say a, a lot of very little, simple things add up to very, very big things. The little things. I always say it. The little things make the difference. Um, Coach, we've, uh, I know this might be a joyous week for you because um, Florida State is 0-2. I know. Coach loves his Florida State Seminoles. Not really. He's a big Notre Dame guy. So I knew he'd probably be pretty happy when I saw that uh, come across the news there. Um, uh, You've got the Irish coming off, and then you got the early season loss for LSU. So uh, how are the Golden Domers? 1-0, baby. 1-0. Beat a ranked opponent out of the get-go, so they got themselves in the hunt. He's got to keep taking them on one at a time. Hopefully the Cowboys can get off to a a 1-0 start as well. They're they're playing this week. I thought uh, so I didn't have surprise. I didn't off their, uh, NFL know. opening day kicks off Thursday. And there's so. a Friday game, so yeah. I hate that we have Friday. But they'll give you something you can watch that on demand after you. Yeah. It's going to be on Peacock on demand there afterwards. Yeah. The the Green Bowl there. So uh, for everybody here on the Jamie Sullivan Raymond James pregame show, I'm Brad Mills. Thanks, Coach, for joining us. Thanks, Brad. Appreciate it, buddy. say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home